in the Chinese dictatorship as a menace, China's Communist Party has now set up a cyberspace administration portal. Sounds boring. In fact, it's used to dob in people, including Chinese students here and their teachers, who are at all critical of China. And maybe this helps to explain why a number of Chinese students here are so very aggressive in defending China and why our university is so quick to give in to them when so many universities are in fact desperate for Chinese money. Two examples this week. One I've already told you about earlier this week. Uh, Elaine Pearson, an adjunct law lecturer at the University of New South Wales, was interviewed by the university's media team and defended Hong Kong's freedom from China. Great stuff, except pro-communist students complained. The article was taken down from the university's website. But the university's Vice-Chancellor Ian Jacobs has now apologised in the email to staff, although not to students, saying, I apologise for this mistake and reaffirm unequivocally our previous commitment to freedom of expression and academic freedom. Yeah, right. But before I tell you the second example, more grovelling to China by universities, with, uh, but without an apology to this one, let me go to my guest. I spoke a short while ago to Mark Latham, former Federal Labor leader, now One Nation leader in the New South Wales Parliament. Mark Latham, thank you so much for joining me. What do you make of that apology? Well, was this a mistake? Uh, it seems to me that the University of New South Wales, not uncommon in Australia's higher education, has become way too reliant on Chinese money. Um, a remarkable statistic, the UNSW gets 27% of its overall revenue from Chinese overseas students. So this has been a case of uh, financial mismanagement, exposing the university to the risks of something like a pandemic and as a result um, it seems a case of China paying the piper and calling the tune and uh, the university needs to do more than apologise or say it's a mistake uh, they need to get their finances in order not be so reliant on one overseas source of revenue and guarantee academic uh, freedom student freedom and also standards you know we've had these alarming reports that with the Chinese students coming in, the university is so hungry and greedy for the money, many of the students can't even speak English. And you've got a massive drop in academic standards where the academics just um, tick and flick and hand out the certificate to uh, cash in on the Chinese dough. I think there's a lot to that. And, uh, of course, uh, this is an example they've apologised for that uh, after it became public, one wonders what's happening, uh, quiet self-censorship behind the scenes that we never know about. Um, I'll give you a second example now. Um, an academic at uh, Charles, Sturt, uh, sorry, Charles Darwin University up in, uh, in Darwin uh, said his students a question about the coronavirus that's now gone around the world. And he said, uh, we've got this global pandemic originating in Wuhan, China, has caused over 250,000 deaths, rendered millions of people ill and inflicted recession on most areas of the global economy. And again, he had Chinese students complaining to the university, saying this was racist, saying this virus started in, in Europe. And the university's pro-vice-chancellor, Sam Jacob, has apologised to these students. He said, we apologise unreservedly for the offence and upset that this is caused. The wording has now been corrected and the college team are working together to make sure that this does not happen again. Your response? Well, Andrew, that wording sounds 100% accurate. Uh, the truth, knowledge, factual, the thing that the university is set up to be and do. So why is a university apologising for the facts? This is the problem with Chinese money uh, compromising academic standards and the core purpose of a university. And uh, the problem there at um, Charles Darwin University, UNSW, we've mentioned the atrocities uh, about Drew Pavlou, this uh, student at the University of Queensland, there's quite a pattern building uh, around the country that our universities have been compromised by their over-reliance on Chinese money. And when we get to a point a university apologises for the truth, then we are seeing the uh, decline of what had been one of the important institutions of our civilization, the, uh, the modern university. So uh, these um, academics and university leaders have got to regain the perspective of why they're there in the first place and why they're, they're, they're publicly funded in part by the Australian taxpayer. Exactly correct and uh, whether they've got far too many of these Chinese funded uh, Confucius uh, 
centres also in universities teaching Chinese mm. culture. I mean, I, how they've let themselves be infiltrated like this is just uh, ridiculous or influenced like this. Talking about the decline, I mean, we're talking about the, right, the tertiary education. Going down to the secondary education, the primary education, the concerns there too. Mark, you drew to my attention the fact that there are, in New South Wales at least, and I wouldn't be surprised if the same is true everywhere else, 42,000 different professional development courses for teachers. 42,000 of them where they can go in a course and, you know, develop their... Uh, skills funded by the taxpayer, how can 42,000 separate development courses possibly have been quality checked by the New South Wales Education Department? Well, they haven't. The minister here, as part of the Berejiklian government, which has lost control of the education system, has said that uh, nobody knows what's in the 42,000 courses. And my office has been going through them. Uh, we're looking at them on the basis that three years ago here, the Safe Schools program was taken out of the New South Wales curriculum. But many of these uh, professional development courses, taxpayer funded, are teaching Safe Schools gender fluidity through the back door. And uh, one of the culprits here is the New South Wales Teachers Federation, which had a webinar on Tuesday night. And there's many atrocities. I could go through a long list. But just to give... Uh, uh, viewers and, and, and taxpayers a, a sense of the absurdities. One of the recommendations in what's supposed to be training the teachers on how they instruct in the classrooms uh, from the Teachers Federation was that you should go do an excursion down to the Sydney Aquarium. Now, sensible people might think, oh, that's about marine uh, biology and habitats. The Sydney yeah, I was uh, struggling to get outrage. I think, oh, well, that's very nice, no, Mark. No, no, Why are you no. worrying about going to the aquarium? Well. well well, the purpose of the excursion is to check out the two penguins there that have supposedly gone gay and have <laughs> adopted and hatched an egg. So you go down there to find out if penguins can be gay. Uh, there's a lesson there for the students, a same-sex lesson, nothing to do with proper education. Don't waste a whole day, if you're in Sydney, further afield, if you're from country New South Wales, um, to study... The, the gay penguins. Now, you know, uh, Paddy and Pete Penguin, we wish them well. I was a home dad and I like the idea of hatching eggs, but I don't think it's education. I don't think it should be instructed and taxpayers shouldn't be paying for this nonsense in so-called teacher training. Well, you got me there. If you'd given me uh, 50 guesses, I wouldn't have guessed that one. <laughs> no, no. Well, no one would. Who could? Who could? I mean, oh, can you imagine? Yes, all the uh, parents, all the parents ticking off. Yes, school excursion to the aquarium. Yeah, yeah. But tick, 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 tick. <laughs> well, um, you can't make this stuff up, Andrew. You can't make it up. It's gone uh, that weird. Mate. Well, Mark, I've got to send an appeal to you in New South Wales. We read in the newspaper, the two uh, major newspapers in Victoria today, we could be facing food shortages as a result of the total incompetence of this government. So, please, uh, you live on a little uh, farm. Send food <laughs> parcels, mate. I'll send you my P.O. Box number soon. Mark Latham, okay, thank I'll, you so I'll much indeed you, for your help. Uh, <laughs> you always have. I appreciate it. See you later.